so um, she received the scholarship to attend the Noman Global Language Center and she was really excited about this. She had previously studied engineering at university but she felt like this was her true purpose and she'd been there for three weeks and she had developed a routine that she stuck to religiously. She walked to school every day, she took the same route home every day, she either called or texted her sister on her walk home every day. She studied by herself, she went to the gym by herself, she didn't really like to socialize, she just kind of kept to herself and didn't really trust anyone. Keep in mind as well that she barely spoke English, so she wouldn't have known too many people yet that she would be close to. And she had also started a job as a waitress at a local Mexican restaurant and she got along really well in their new life in this new country and everything was going great. And then on April 16th, 2015, she appears to have vanished into thin air. She finished class around 1.30 p.m. and started on her one and a half mile walk. She texted her sister like she always did, and then she also texted her uncle who lived nearby and asked him to take her to the store around 5 p.m. So she was making plans for the day. It's not like, you know, she was planning to continue her day. Um, she was heading northbound on a street that existed of just a couple of blocks of apartments. It wasn't like a, like huge, I believe, but it was a very populated street, so it's not like it was deserted either. But she vanished without a trace. Her cell phone had no more activity. Her various social media accounts had no more activity. Um, there was nothing, and there was only one street camera that could corroborate her walking but it was the hospital's camera and it wasn't facing the street that day. It was facing a construction site that the hospital was having work done. So her uncle called her other uncle who lived in California and said, hey, I was supposed to pick her up and take her to the store, but I can't reach her. I've tried calling her multiple times. There has to be something wrong. Now, since she was not only in a city that she wasn't familiar with, but in a brand new country, it was assumed that she wouldn't just disappear on her own. And she had also made plans for that day. So her uncles decided to contact the police department. And the police started a really thorough investigation. They interviewed um, her roommates, other students, teachers at the school. Um, and this ultimately led to their first tip. Her uncle remembered um, Elizabeth telling him about a boy who really liked her and it made her really uncomfortable because he just wasn't getting the hint. He asked her out on a daily basis and she always turned him down. She always said no and he just kept chasing her and it obviously made her worried enough that she told her uncle about it. So the police tracked this guy down, interviewed him, but their one and only tip quickly went down the drain because they ruled him out almost immediately. So they organized search parties. They walked up and down the street multiple times to find any and every clue, and they got, and they came up with nothing. Um, so Elizabeth Smart, who was a girl that went missing in Utah a few years prior and was returned after a few months, 
was someone she knew, it would have had to be someone who spoke Spanish because she didn't speak English well enough to have a conversation with people. So I'm thinking that it would then either be someone from her school, maybe, but more likely someone from the restaurant she worked at, either an employee or a patron that came there a lot. Also, she only had about a mile left to go. Why would she take a ride? Since she was a very untrusting person and she really didn't like to socialize, why break that routine that you've stuck so religiously to? And she was known for sticking to routines. If you only have a mile left on your walk, um, I don't know what the conditions were that day. Maybe it was raining really hard and she decided to, you know, that she didn't want to walk anymore. But in Utah, I'm pretty sure it doesn't rain that much there. I don't know. I, uh, I find this case weird because she literally vanished from one moment to the next with nothing. The reason that I don't believe the sex trafficking theory is because there wasn't even a piece of her possessions found. There was nothing left behind on the street. Nothing. And I always think if someone is forcefully taken, you find some sort of like signs of a struggle or some sort of trail or just someone would have noticed it. I also don't believe that the family is, is involved. Like, where would she be after 30 years? Sure, you can do it for the money, but there wasn't that much money to begin with. And you're not going to kill your own relative just for that little bit of money, I would hope. Like, I would imagine then that you would bring her back after a while and let her tell some story about how she was taken by a stranger and, like, hang up this big, believable lie. And that way you could have her back and keep the money. But it's been three years and she's still gone, so I don't know why her family would do something like this. They also all look genuinely distraught in interviews and really upset. And I do believe that a lot of the reasons that they look so shady and that maybe one of them failed the polygraph test is because of a language barrier. The uncle spoke English, but it still wasn't their first language. So I think a lot probably just got lost in translation. I think I believe the getting in a car with someone she knew theory or the starting a new life theory. Yeah, I don't know. Again, I don't know why she would have gotten in a car with anyone she knew because she had only been there for three weeks. She didn't really know that many people yet. But it seemed like she really liked working in that restaurant and she got along with everyone really well there. So I do still think it might have been a patron from the restaurant that she really 